What's going on everybody? I'm coming at you with a Logic Pro X, I guess, tutorial today. So what I'm going to be doing is making a beat from scratch with only using Logic Pro X stock sounds. I'm making this video for like the people that are, uh, I guess, just starting to learn how to make beats and stuff. And when I was just learning with Logic Pro 9, these videos helped me a lot because they showed me where to go and what to do, like how to use the DAW, I guess. So yeah. I have an instrument open right now. I'm just going to load up a piano, which is if you open up your library, your piano should be right here. I like having the inspector open a lot of the times though because you can fool around with your volume and uh, EQ and put your plugins in if you want to while you're on the go just to get the right sound. I start off with a piano and get my melody down and then afterwards go and find a uh, other sounds to use for it that match like the style of the beat. I have this melody here that goes kind of like this. So I'm gonna record that in and then get to going on making the full beat. So when you're starting your beat off, you wanna put your click here so you could hear what the tempo is. And then uh, if you go right here, it's, you have all these different options. So you have beats in time where you can't change the tempo. It just shows you the time of the instrumental. You have just beats where it shows you the bars that it's going through. You have just your time and you have custom. I usually like working in custom because you, you can set it to show whatever you want basically. And I have here the time showing the beats playing and the tempo also. So I think I'm going to use uh, 129 as my tempo today. Actually, I'm going to use 130, uh, 134 as my tempo today. So the problem with having your custom though is you don't have the record button anywhere there. So what you want to do is go to your Beats and Project and then it shows your record uh, button here so that you press it and it starts recording. So I'm going to use, usually I, uh, if I'm making the beat actually, I use this Beats and Project, uh, I guess, option here. And then when I'm going in to start mixing and mastering, I switch it to the custom so I can see uh, when I'm arranging it, the time here, and if I want to switch the tempo or uh, anything else. So I'm just going to record this piano in right now. So once you have your uh, MIDI file recorded here, and by the way, I'm using a MIDI uh, Roland A49 MIDI keyboard controller to uh, record this right now, but you could also go into your uh, window. Command K shows your musical typing, and you can uh, play your play it with your uh, keyboard if you don't have money to get a MIDI controller yet, or you just rather work that way but I like having a piano here to play so once you have your MIDI file recorded you wanna select all of the notes hit quantize and then it basically puts it all on beat for you so there's no notes that are gonna be off beat when it plays back and you can hear it now I might bring the tempo up now a bit too actually because it's I like that better, maybe even higher. Yeah, 138 is what I'm gonna use. Now you wanna start adding some drums. So to add a new instrument, you go here, click that plus sign, create software instrument, and then if you have your library and inspector open, or you don't even need your inspector open, but I just like it there, you have all your uh, stock sounds here on the side. So usually uh, people prefer this the electronic drum kits 
because you could basically choose hip hop, uh, 909 for house, electro, like disco. You just have every different. Uh, you have a lot of different genres to choose from. Retro machines. So this is what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna use the 808 boutique 808 because I'm making a, I guess hip hop beat or like trap R&B trap style. I guess. All right. So I'm gonna be using the clap, the rim hit and the kick from this. All you do hit record and then it starts going. It gives you a four count in for you to start uh, to let you know when you're gonna start having to play it. So as you can see, two, three, four. Again, you have it recorded. You want to go into here, select it all, hit quantize, and then it's all good for you when you play it back. Also, another thing, while you're in here, if you didn't like what you played out, like here, I, I don't think I like this kick here. Just take it out. Delete, gets rid of it. You can also go uh, up here. I like doing this a lot. You have all these different options if you want to choose them. So pointer tool, you don't want to use that because that's what you're using to click like other shit. But pencil tool, you just hit command on your keyboard and you can use the pencil tool and put in uh, instruments. Then just to get rid of it, take your finger off command and then you can keep using your uh, pointer tool what you should be doing so that it's easier when you want to mix and master what I'm doing right now I clicked on this press command and then press D twice to create three different tracks so what you want to do now when you click click this hold option and then it just lets you copy them so what you want to do is go in and delete all the other sounds from it so you want to have every sound in, in its own separate track for for when you go into mix and master because you don't want your clap to have an EQ that the kick should have or you don't want your kick to have the clap EQ so now as you can see I have everything also if you do this now you can turn down stuff and turn up stuff that you want louder or quieter so Next, you should probably add some bass in there. Every beat needs bass. Never not add bass because bass is what fills it up ultimately, gives it a nice, uh, gives it a more fuller sound. So again, if you ended up closing this for whatever reason, it's just in the top left. As you can see here, you have bass at the top. These are all the, uh, like regular basses, basses that you have that you can actually play that have like a live sound. If you want some electronic basses, you have to go to your synthesizer and then go to bass here. Or uh, when I used to use Logic X, I liked a lot of the bass sounds they have, which is you just go Legacy, Logic, Bass, and then you can choose it here in the synth bass or whatever bass you want. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'll just go into the synthesizer and choose one from here. So I'm going to be using this big saw bass and then I'm going to put an effect on it to make the sound better and I'll show you how to do that once I record it in. But if you don't know how to play a piano or don't understand keys and stuff, what you can do for your bass is do the click option to drag this here and then just delete all the higher notes because you only want the lower notes.
Now here's another uh, tip for you. You can uh, right click on the um, on a note and then you have all these options here. So what you want to do is choose this, trim note end to following notes, force legato. So what that basically does is it brings all the notes together so that there's no spaces in between. So now you're... Your bass is probably still at a high octave, so what you want to do is find the note, which it says pitch. It says pitch right there, F3, which means your note is F3, so you want to bring it down to F2. You can also play around with your notes a bit too to uh, change the bass melody. So right here there's a piano hit. Right here there's a piano hit. So what you can do to cut a note so that it plays as a new different note is hold command and then press T. And as you can see there it makes a cut. So now this is going to play as its own separate note here. So if I go... That. To change your uh, velocities to make it all match, you can you see right here there's a setting to do it. Or what you could also do, which is what I like doing, go back up to your command click or your secondary option and choose velocity. Then when you hold command, as you can see, a V pops up there. And if you click on your note and pull it down or up, you can choose your pull it down or up. You can choose your velocity. Anyway, so now you have your uh, bass along with your drums, your, your basic drums, and then your piano, and this is what it sounds like. Sorry, this is what it sounds like. Also, to loop, I forgot to say this, to loop uh, stuff, you usually have this, um, I guess, dark bar when you open up a new track. That's your loop, so you can loop uh, a certain amount of bars. So you just click on that, or you can just click um, this at the top, the loop icon. Then you can drag it to however far you want. You can move it the whole thing if you want. So you have your basic drum pattern, your bass and your piano. After I have this stuff down, you can go back to your drum uh, kit and do command D again to create a new one. Now you wanna add your hi-hats and um, other percussion and FX and stuff like that. So for hi-hats, if you want the rolls and stuff you hear in a lot of trap music. You do what I just did there, right click, create empty MIDI region and then drag it out to the length of your pattern. Go up here, choose your command uh, key as your, um, whoops, choose it as your pencil tool. Find your hi-hat and then start penciling it in. That's not my hi-hat. Shouldn't that be my hi-hat? That's my hi-hat. So then you just drag it into this and then you can hold option while you click and drag all of them. And once you have a certain amount, you select all of them, option, makes more. Now, if you want to make it faster, like 1 16th notes, you have this icon at the top, like I said earlier. Just drag it out so you see more of the grids. Then move your uh, move back here. Select all of them and just drag them into smaller notes. And then option again and bring them together. So I'm just gonna make a pattern right now and then basically just follow this type of way to create these hi-hat patterns when you're doing it by yourself. Now you have your hi-hats. You can even make them shorter than that if you want for the really fast rolls, but this is just how I think it sounds good with the beat. So next again, Command D brings you a new track. Now, you most likely want to add an open hat. Once 
Once you have your basic uh, pattern down, if you just want to loop it, you don't have to keep playing it out. Whoops, I have my pencil note. I need my velocity. And then to loop it, if you have a MIDI pattern here, you, you should see the loop icon show up above the, on the white part of the MIDI note to loop it. Here's a tip I have if you want that Drake type of bass sound. So this is what the big saw bass sounds like alone. If you open up your EQ here, turn it on, show your analyzer, which is always a good thing to do so you can see where the frequencies are. All you have to do is turn on this, uh, turn on the, the high pass or low pass and just drag it, drag the hertz down, change this 12 dBs into 36 or 48. And you have your Drake sound, you can even bring it lower than that. And this is what it sounds like all together now. Let's bring it up a bit. There's your beat. That's the basics of making a beat in Logic Pro X with stock sounds. In the future, I might make a video of where to find other free sounds that could help you out with your sound quality or making more industry sounding beats. But that's gonna be the video. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if it helped you at all. Leave a comment below about any questions you have and I'll answer them in the comments. But yeah, thanks for watching and peace.